every Good Friday is a sad day. When we were children, my mother brought her Sicilian culture into the commemoration of Good Friday. When in her little towns in Sicily, the statues of the Passion were carried throughout the whole town. A statue depicting the agony of the garden, the scourge of the pillar, the crown of the thorns, the carrion of the cross, Jesus meeting his mother, etc. With that in mind, although we did not have such an elaborate procession in Jersey City, my mother used to forbid us from going outside and doing anything that was active, especially anything by which we would jump on the ground. No running, no jumping, no rope carrying, no nothing that would hurt the ground. Her mentality was because this day Jesus fell on the ground of the earth three times. This day he was nailed onto a cross which was placed into the ground on Golgotha. And the one that was especially close to her, this day he met his mother on his way to Golgotha. Good Friday has always been a sad day. But we call it good because if it wasn't for that sacrifice on that altar of the cross on Golgotha, we would not be saved. Just recently, I was explaining to a student who is studying for RCIA, the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults, what that meant, because he couldn't quite get it. Because if Jesus descended into hell, who was there? So I explained carefully what he did when he descended into Hades. In this translation, we sometimes call it hell. He went to release those who had not yet been permitted to enter heaven, but who were good people. And in Byzantine iconology, the first two he sees are Adam and Eve. And you have this beautiful icon of Jesus reaching one hand to Adam, one hand to Eve, as he is stepping on the gravestone, breaking it. So with that, I explained that when Jesus did this and descended, it was to open up the gates of heaven to all the prophets and the good people who had predeceased him and who God has determined would join him one day in heaven. We see a magnificent rendition of that, of course, in the Sistine Chapel, the Last Judgment, of all those prophets and saints who were with him in heaven. Visually, it helps us understand what the resurrection would be and what the descent into the land of the dead meant. But Good Friday has always been a sad day. And this year, 2020, it's probably the saddest Good Friday since the original one. The churches are empty. Our families and friends who are with us through the technology of the 21st century, cameras, internet, and so on, participate at a great distance. So where you are, experience the sadness of this day. Experience the sadness of those who are suffering throughout the world. We can't even say, in our own neighborhood, or our state, or our country, throughout the world. And what an irony it is that Jesus came to bring all people to heaven. Jesus came to reach out as the Catholic philosophy of our church so clearly says, all people. So all people throughout the world whether they, are, they realize today is Good Friday or not, are suffering, and that's sad. 
So this Good Friday is indeed sad. As we look to Golgotha, and we look to the cross, and we look to Mary at the foot of the cross, and John, his friend, we seek their assistance. We have implored Mary in the United States under the title of Guadalupe as mother of the Americas to relieve our sadness, not on Good Friday, but to relieve our sadness of the virus that has hurt, indeed killed, indeed tortured so many people. Mary was not alone at the cross. She had her relatives and friends with her. And Jesus is not alone. And as we look to Good Friday 2020, we realize all we have to do is turn on our TVs or internet and we'll get new statistics as to why this day is so sad. But on the other side, remember who was with Jesus on his way to Golgotha. Simon and Cyrene was forced into helping Jesus carry the cross. Could you imagine if you were there? He would look like a criminal to most people and his friends ran away. And you were asked, would you carry this cross for this man? What would we say? Veronica pushing her way through the crowd, becoming a name that is synonymous of what she did, showing us her true faith in the true image of Jesus. So this woman takes her veil and washes the face of Jesus, cleans as much of the spit and blood and mud off of his face, and as a thank you, gives her the traditional Veronica's veil. She pushed her way to help Jesus. Our nurses and doctors, scientists, polit politicians, church officials, and the list goes on and on, are indeed pushing their way in so many ways to wipe the faces of those who are suffering from the COVID virus. The nurses are there, sometimes assisting, sometimes washing, sometimes wrapping in the cloths of death those who have died. This is indeed a sad Good Friday. The opportunity for us to be there at the cross in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago doesn't exist. We could indeed go to the Holy Land and re-walk the steps of Dolorosa. But we don't have to go that far. Jesus is here with us in the disguise of those suffering from COVID, in the disguise of those who died of COVID, and yet we are the outsiders, the people who watch Jesus go up to Golgotha, and we can do our part. We can pray, we can support our healthcare providers. We can give a little something extra to the people who bring the food to those who order out. We can extremely feel the passion that with which we should reach out to simple people that in the ordinary time of day and day of the week, we don't think about. We think about our male people at Christmas. We don't think about that person who continues the mail to our homes and apartments. We don't think about that person on the other side of the register when we're getting our food. She or he, if they're not properly covered, are risking their lives, and nevertheless risking their lives handling what they handle, whether it's money, paper bags, or the groceries. So this Good Friday is indeed sad because so many of our sisters and brothers are suffering as Jesus suffered on his way to Golgotha. Are you going to wipe their face? Are you going to raise 
their cross off their shoulders? What are you going to do? And I ask all of us, what are we going to do this Good Friday to relieve the burden of Golgotha off of the shoulders of Jesus and off of the life experiences of those who are suffering and those who are assisting those who suffer with the COVID virus. Good Friday is indeed a sad day.